नाहम तथा अजमान हविर्ता ने चोतृतुत भुन्मुखे यद्राह्मण से मुकतरुघासम दुष्ट से मय्यवहित निज कर्म पाक ट्रांसलेशन I do not enjoy the oblations offered by the sacrificers in the sacrificial fire which is one of my own mouths with the same relish as I do the delicacies overflowing with ghee which are offered to the mouths of the brahmanas who have dedicated to me the results of their activities and who are ever satisfied with my prasada purport by Srila Prabhupada yes. The devotee of the Lord or the Vaishnava does not take anything without offering it to the Lord. Since a Vaishnava dedicates all the results of his activities to the Lord, he does not taste anything eatable which is not first offered to him. The Lord also relishes giving to the Vaishnava's mouth all eatables offered to him. It is clear from this verse that the Lord eats through the sacrificial fire and the Brahmana's mouth. So many articles grains ghee etc are offered in sacrifice for the satisfaction of the lord the lord accepts sacrificial offerings from the brahmanas and devotees and elsewhere it is stated that whatever is given for the brahmanas and vaishnavas to eat is also accepted by the lord but here it is said that he accepts offerings to the mouths of the brahmanas and vaishnavas with even greater relish the best example of this is found in the life of advaita prabhu in his dealings with haridas thakur even though haridas was born of a mohammedan family advaita prabhu offered him the first dish of prasada after the performance of a sacred fire ceremony haridas thakur informed him that he was born of a mohammedan family and asked why advaita prabhu was offering the first dish to a mohammedan instead of an elevated brahmana out of his humbleness haridas condemned himself as a mohammedan but advaita prabhu being an experienced devotee accepted him as a real brahmana Advaita Prabhu asserted that by offering the first dish to Haridas Thakur he was getting the result of feeding 100000 brahmanas the conclusion is that if one can feed a brahmana or a vaishnava it is better than performing hundreds of thousands of sacrifices in this age therefore it is recommended that harer nama chanting the holy name of god and pleasing the vaishnava are the only means to elevate oneself to spiritual life thus ends the bhakti vedanta purport the supreme lord has come to the entrance of the vaikuntha the last entrance for one enters the personal abode of the lord that's because the two door keepers jaya and vijaya at the seventh uh, gate they stopped these four kumaras and the kumaras became very angry at them so in order to resolve this problem the lord personally came to the gate seventh gate and he is now speaking to the kumaras already in the previous verse he has glorified the pure devotee who is described here as a brahmana we should never mistake the reference to brahmana to be like one of their caste brahmanas in this kali yuga 
Kali Yuga simply because somebody is born in a Brahmanical family, they claim to be Brahmanas. Whereas their behavior, their qualities, their uh, standard of uh, practice is all unacceptable. Whereas the real Brahmanas are those who are decorated with all the qual Brahmanical qualities which is rare to be found in this Kali Yuga. Shamo damo tapas shaucham kshanti rajava mevacha jnanam vijnanam astikyam brahma karma subhavajam Control of the mind, control of the senses. Shamo damo tapaha Practicing austerities. Shaucham, cleanliness. The topmost standard of cleanliness the Brahmana should have. Brahmanas, another name is Shuchi. Shuchi means Mr. Clean. Always clean. Always clean. And this cleanliness is not just external cleanliness, but also internal cleanliness. Keeps his heart clean, free from envy, free from jealousy, free from anger. By practicing austerity, by studying the Shastra, by applying the Shastra, by having faith in the scriptures, Jnanam, Vijnanam, Astikyam, Kshanti, tolerate, tolerates all kinds of inconveniences in order to uh, be humble, in order to uh, live an austere life. Just like now it is very hot, summer season. So Brahmana tolerates this heat in summer. Winter he tolerates cold. And in rain season, when there are heavy rains, he tolerates that. And sometimes it is very windy, he tolerates that also. According to one song written by Govinda Das Kaviraj, Shita Ata Pavata Varishana Eidina Jamini Jagire. Material existence means we are bothered by one of these four at different times cold, heat, uh, wind, and rain. So Brahmana tolerates all this. He even tolerates insult. He tolerates insult also from others, envious people. But he will never maintain envy towards anybody. So, such examples of ideal Brahmanas are difficult to find in Kali Yuga. But there are, even now there are. Who are such Brahmanas whom we can find now? They are the devotees, pure devotees of Krishna. Devotees are automatically Brahmanas. They are the best of the Brahmanas. Vijavara, Vijavarya, Vijottama. So Sutta Goswami, because he is a devotee, he is addressed as the best of the Brahmanas. Shaunaka Rishi is also addressed as the best of the Brahmanas. So, uh, the reference to Brahmana should be understood to refer to pure devotee. Brahmana Vaishnava, as I explained yesterday. So, the Lord is now glorifying the such Brahmanas who are devotees, pure devotees, that he relishes the delicacies which are offered to such Brahmanas more than the offerings of oblations in the sacrificial fire. In the fifth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, in the last verse, 29th verse, Krishna says, Bhoktaram Yajna Tapasam I am the enjoyer of all sacrifices and austerities, or penances. 
so whatever is offered in the sacrificial fire is actually offering to the mouth of the supreme lord in the form of the sacrificial fire if you read the description of the universal form of the lord fire is regarded as the mouth of the lord in the universal form the sun and moon are his two eyes so therefore in a sacrificial fire when performer of the sacrifice offers something in a sacrificial fire foolish people ignorant people atheistic people materialistic people will say you are burning ghee grains nice eatables you are wasting but it's what they don't understand is we are offering to the lord who is the one who has provided everything who is the source of everything we are acknowledging that we are receiving from the lord everything that we have so these people cannot understand but the scriptures explain that the lord accepts through the sacrificial fire whatever offerings that are given to him and because the sacrificial fire is one of his mouths so through that he is accepting such offerings so therefore bhoktaram yagna tapasa he is the enjoyer of all sacrifices whatever is offered in the sacrifice is for the pleasure of the supreme lord yagnyarthat karmana lokoyam karma bandhana तदर्थम कर्म कौंते या सो प्रोपाद एक्सप्लेन तदर्थम कर्म कौंते या मीन्स डू एवरीथिंग ऑल वर्क फॉर हिज प्लेशर फॉर द प्लेशर ऑफ द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड तदर्थम यज्ञार्थात मीन्स फॉर द सेक ऑफ प्लीजिंग विष्णु वॉज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड यज्ञ यज्ञ पुरुषा सो दिस इज द सेंट्रल पॉइंट of krishna consciousness everything we have to do in order to please the supreme lord so here is a secret for uh, very uh, easily pleasing the lord through pleasing his pure devotee directly the lord is telling i relish more the delicacies offered to my pure devotee than those delicacies offered to me through the sacrificial fire so since the goal is to please the supreme lord whatever can be more pleasing to the lord that we have to do if you want to make quick advancement in krishna consciousness so shri la prabhupad explains in the purport that the devotee of the lord does not take anything without offering it to the lord so just like a devotee always accepts anything which is offered to the lord remnants of what is offered to the lord prasada यज्ञशिष्टाशिन सत मुच्यंते सर्वकिषि भगवद्गीता कृष्ण एक्सप्लेन इन दर्ड चैप्टर द डिवोटीज आर दोस् एक्सेप्ट ओनली यज्ञशिष्टा रेमनेंट्स ऑफ फूड ऑफर्ड इन सैक्रिफाइस सो प्रभुपा एक्सप्लेन वॉट कैंड ऑफ यज्ञ डू डिवोटीज डू दे डू नाइन कैंड ऑफ यज्ञ What are the nine kinds of yagna devotees do? Prajendra Nandu. Yes. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmani Vedanam. These are the nine kinds of yagna devotees do. In the devotional line, our method of performing sacrifice is. these nine kinds of devotional service 
These are secrets revealed by Prabhupada. You have to carefully study Prabhupada's books to understand. Because Krishna says you should accept only remnants of food offered in sacrifice. Sometimes people think sacrifice means fire sacrifice. Fire sacrifice is one type of sacrifice. It's not the only type of sacrifice. In general, the third chapter explains, anything which is done for pleasing Vishnu is called a sacrifice. Anything which is done for pleasure of Vishnu, whatever it be, for pleasing Vishnu, that is sacrifice. So Arjuna is killing enemies on the battlefield. That is also yajna, because that is pleasing to Krishna. He is doing it for pleasing Krishna. Karishe vachanam tava. After hearing the whole Bhagavad Gita, what is Arjuna's conclusion? I will simply act according to your order. I will do whatever you want me to do. I simply want to please you. That's all. Initially he was telling, how can I kill my kinsman? How can I kill my respectable superiors like Bhishma and Drona? I don't want to enjoy this kingdom. So, that Arjuna, under illusion, he was refusing to fight the battle. And he was giving his own reasons. When Krishna refuted all those reasons, then Arjuna began to inquire. What is sacrifice? What is knowledge? What is devotion? Now when we go to preach also, we have experience that at least in our country, India, Bharatvarsha, people have their some understanding of God, spirituality, religion, but it is difficult to preach to them to correct their misunderstanding. Not always people will have a correct understanding of what is uh, dharma, what is uh, yajna, sacrifice. So much so that there is one institution they only believe in fire sacrifice. They don't want to worship deity. They don't want to chant uh, the holy name. They don't believe in doing kirtan. They don't offer prayers. Nothing. Only fire sacrifice. Because according to them, this fire sacrifice, of course, Vedas say in the Karmakanda section, three ways of actually uh, performing Vedic uh, rites or Vedic rituals. Yajna, Dana, Tapa. And conveniently, they have accepted only one, Yajna. That also in the form of fire sacrifice. Dana and Tapa they completely leave out. And then all the further sections of the Vedas which describe cultivation of knowledge, which describe developing detachment, which describe devotional service, all that is left out. And they simply keep on performing this Havan, Havan, Havan. And they make elaborate arrangements for performing this sacrifice because the Vedic sacrifice, uh, Krishna explains, or rather Shukadeva Goswami explains in the 10th canto, this Vedic sacrifice, so many details are there to be followed. In the Krishna book it is explained, Krishna once 
went to a particular place to deliver the wives who were devotees of some yagnik brahmanas these yagnik brahmanas they were very attached to this karmakanda section of the vedas and they were performing sac- uh, this fire sacrifice for elevation to heavenly planets but their wives were pure devotees of krishna so in that pastime narration shukadev goswami says that these yagnik brahmanas they are expert in arranging for the sacrifice in chanting mantras in offering all that oblations exactly according to the proper time proper place proper um uh, proper ingredients everything so the details are given by shukadev goswami so if you read that you will see it's not at all easy to organize a vedic sacrifice nowadays of course people they are unable to really do a proper vedic sacrifice so they make some substitutions but that's not allowed strictly speaking in a vedic sacrifice it's not allowed if you have to offer gold you have to actually offer gold you cannot substitute gold with some till seeds and say in place of gold i'm offering this till seeds in a strict vedic sacrifice so propa says our acharyas explain that in kali yuga neither there are qualified brahmanas who can chant the mantras effectively to successfully perform a vedic fire sacrifice nor do the people have the means to offer all those ingredients so much of ghee is required for a vedic sacrifice sacrifice where will they get the ghee so therefore it is not recommended in kali yuga harer nama harer nama harer nama iva kevalam kalau nastye iva nastye iva nastye iva gatiranyatha so yagnai sankirtana prayer yajanti hi sumed sah only sankirtan yagna is recommended form of sacrifice in kali yuga so this uh, vedic uh, fire sacrifice is often misunderstood in any case whether somebody performs a fire sacrifice or some other way perform some other ritual vedic ritual yagna dana tapa or any of the other processes the aim is to please vishnu the please the aim is to please krishna dharma svanushtita pumsam vishvaksena katha suyah na upadayet yadiratim shrama eva hi kevalam if one does not please vishnu or one does not develop attraction for hearing the glories of vishnu whatever uh, aspect of dharma the person is practicing or following how or strictly he may be following it's all a waste of time it's wasted labor shrama eva hi kevalam so therefore one should understand the central point of all these practices of the entire vedic uh, recommendations is to please vishnu and devotional service means simply to please vishnu that's all there is a verse in the vishnu purana very 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 important verse वर्णाश्रमचारवता पुषेण परपुमा विष्णुराध्यते पंथ न अन्यतोष कारण ऑल द रेकमेंडेशन्स फॉर फॉलोइंग वर्णाश्रम धर्म ऑल द ड्यूटीज ऑल द रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज ऑल दी 
rules, regulations in the entire Varnashrama Dharma is simply meant for pleasing Vishnu. So, these ritualistic Brahmanas, they simply follow all the rituals and miss out the central point. Actually, according to the tradition, Vedic tradition, even impersonalist brahmanas in the Vedic times, in their home there will be a saligram shila. They worship saligram shila compulsorily. All brahmanas, even if they are impersonalists. So that worshipping saligram shila means worshipping Vishnu. And every day they have to offer Naivedya. Whatever a Brahmana eats, he has to first offer to the Saligram Shila. And then only he can eat. So the purpose is to please Vishnu. But because they are impersonalists, sometimes these impersonalists, they don't have this aim of pleasing Vishnu. First of all, their conception of Vishnu is impersonal Brahman. Vishnu is impersonal, has got an impersonal feature, yes. Impersonal Brahman is also Vishnu. But Vishnu, the personality of Godhead, is a source of that impersonal Brahman. Bhagavad Gita Krishna explains, Brahmano hi pratishtaham. Bhagavatam says, Brahmeti Paramatmeti Bhagavan iti shabdyate vadanti tat tattva vidaha. The absolute truth is to be understood in three different aspects. Brahman, Paramatma, Bhagavan. And Bhagavan is the highest understanding. Bhagavan is the ultimate source. Aham sarvasya prabhavo matas sarvam pravartate. Janmad yasi yataha. The ultimate source is Krishna. The personality of God, of Vishnu. So this the impersonalists miss out completely because they got a wrong philosophy. They say the opposite of what is told in the Bhagavad Gita. They say the personality of God at Krishna or Vishnu is coming from the impersonal Brahman. That's what they say. It's totally wrong. It's totally opposite of what Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita. They study the Bhagavad Gita, but they have their own commentary. Impersonal commentary. So they'll twist the meaning. Clearly, Bhagavad Gita says, Brahmanohi Pratishta Aham. Aham means Krishna. Krishna is speaking. Krishna says, I am the source of the impersonal Brahman. Very clear. But they will give an interpretation to that. And Krishna says, Krishna is the source of impersonal Brahman. They will interpret that as, Krishna is coming from the impersonal Brahman. So how dangerous it is to read Mayavada Bhashya. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu warns us, Mayavada Bhashya Shunile Hoy Sarvanash, your entire understanding, whatever you may have, correct understanding, all that will be completely changed, will be polluted with uh, wrong theories, wrong understanding. Because conditioned souls have a tendency for material enjoyment, have a tendency to lord over material nature, have some degree of enviousness towards Krishna, the personality of Godhead. So therefore, with such tendencies, it's very dangerous to even uh, little short time associate or hear some Mayavada Bhashya. Very dangerous. Nowadays, because of this uh, internet and television programs, so many Mayavadis are active and they are going on speaking Mayavada Bhashya. 
So householders, when you watch, you have to be very, very careful. Prabhupada says, Vrindavan has become polluted with these Mayavada, uh, Mayavadi uh, Bhagavat speakers. They even do Bhagavat Saptaha. But what they speak is Mayavada philosophy in the name of Bhagavat Katha. Because after nicely describing Krishna's pastimes, in the end they will say, you have to merge into Krishna. After all the explanation, the whole Vrindavan, they are thinking how we can please Krishna, how we can serve Krishna, how we can become servant of the servant of Krishna. Entire 10th canto is only that, entire Bhagavatam is only that, nothing else. But these people somehow give that interpretation. So very, very dangerous is my other philosophy. And even these Brahmanas who are Mayavadis, they will say to uh, better than worshipping uh, Vishnu is to worship the Brahmanas. Better than feeding Vishnu, you have to feed the Brahmanas. But if you feed a Mayavadi Brahmana, that is not pleasing to Vishnu. That is not pleasing to Vishnu. So therefore, here, particularly, the Lord is telling, uh, I relish more that which is offered to the mouths of the Brahmanas who are dedicated to me the results of their activities and who are ever satisfied with my prasada. Two things he is telling. Such Brahmanas whom the Lord is glorifying here is those who have dedicated the results of their activities entirely to the Supreme Lord. And it is the Lord who is speaking, Supreme Lord who is speaking in Vaikuntha. So, necessarily such brahmanas have to be personalists, have to be devotees. Only devotee brahmanas would have dedicated everything to the personality of Godhead. The Mayavadis don't even know about the transcendental personality of the Supreme Lord. They do not know. They think his form is made of matter. When the Lord incarnates in this world in a human-like form, they think that is a human form. First of all, they make the mistake of thinking that's a human form. It's not a human form. Manushim tanumashritam. Human-like form. And it is completely spiritual. Ishwaraha Paramaha Krishnaha Satchidananda Vigraha. Satchidananda Vigraha. It is not a material form. They think that uh, Brahman has assumed one material form. Incarnation. This is the explanation of incarnation by the Mayavadis. So such Brahmanas are not being referred here. Those who have dedicated the results of their activities to Krishna or Vishnu and who are ever satisfied with my prasada, with the prasadam of the Supreme Lord. That means such brahmanas will always offer to Vishnu and then only accept the remnants as prasadam. Never they will touch anything else. So such brahmanas, the Supreme Lord is very much glorifying here. Glorifying such Brahmanas. They are all devotees. As I explained, Brahmana Pandita and Brahmana Vaishnava. So, Brahmana Pandita is a, a stage of advancement in spiritual life where one becomes learned in the Vedic scriptures and becomes conversant with all Vedic wisdom. But to apply that, he has to become a devotee of the Supreme Lord. Only a devotee can apply all those principles. Yat karoshi, yadashnasi, yad juhoshi, dadasi, yad yad tapasya, zikonteya, tat kurushwa, madarpanam. 
so that uh, everything done as an offering to the supreme lord mother pranam mat karma krut mat paramo mat bhakta sanga varjitah nirvaira sarva bhuteshu yas samame ti pandava the essence of the gita 55th verse of the 11th chapter so only such devotees are always glorified by krishna throughout the vedic scriptures so whenever there is reference to brahmana it should be understood as a brahmana vaishnava who is glorified by krishna and not anybody else so i'll stop here any questions grantara shrimad bhagavatam ki jay shri prabhupad ki jay